Hi, Kevin Clegg from Wattmaster, here with Rob Lamb today. Rob's going to demonstrate how to install an Elko hazardous area steel wired cable gland in both the barrier and non-barrier form. It's interesting to note that the hazardous steel wired armoured cable glands from Wattmaster can be used for either a barrier or non-barrier application just with a slight adjustment to the product. The, it's also interesting to note that there's one approval number for hazardous non-barrier and hazardous barrier with the Elko steel wide cable glue. Well Rob will hand it over to you now and um, after this we should all be able to terminate a hazardous area cable glue correctly. Having completed the fitment of the hazardous armoured weatherproof gland, at specification on some sites there will be a requirement to use a barrier gland. A barrier gland is quite often uh, called a flame proof or an explosion proof gland. The fitment is very similar in that we still need to have grounding cones. The one fundamental difference will be that we use an epoxy compound between the cores because on some builds, albeit this is a modest build and our bedding is nice and symmetrical, on larger builds the voiding between conductors, even with packing, um, sees the dimension being distorted or not round or with holes. So we can't grab a circular seal to seal it because it won't completely do the job. In this case, we will just check again. If we have a look at our HAWB gland table, you'll note that the difference between the part number previous that we've installed and currently now, ALC HAW20B-B, B being barrier. If we have a look at the fitment details, same for the cable, same length of exposed steel wire armour, but we've got another bedding dimension here, G, which is 11 millimetres long, which we now need to, instead of having an arbitrary length here, this is another critical dimension that we must consider. With the Alco HAW20SB-B or any dash B barrier gland, the fundamental difference that you will see, it is shipped with a small amount of epoxy. So inside this container, we have the two-pack epoxy, with which we'll mix and mould shortly. Additionally, inside the gland, there is always a specification for fitment, for torque settings, and the exploded view, just in case you get stuck. But fundamentally, when you open the gland and it comes out of the packet, by default, HAW or HAW-B the brass ferrule is always fitted. Previously we discarded this. By comparison in this fitment, we don't want to use the overbedding seal because of the lack of symmetry on a cable or the requirement to use the barrier. The barrier uh, ferrule is used at the expense of the seal. You can't fit both. They are mutually exclusive. So for a barrier gland, we discard that seal. When we discuss that bedding dimension, the critical bedding dimension here, which is 11 millimetres long, allows for the trimming and removal of the bedding, the packing of the epoxy between the cores, the installation of the ferrule over that last 11 millimetres of bedding, and whilst on the cable you can see that the ferrule actually meets and doesn't quite go underneath those steel wire armours. Okay. Now we've trimmed our bedding to the appropriate 11 millimetres from our chart. Just check the fit by putting the ferrule over the, over the conductors and you can see that it's going to sit in its finished position there. In packing these conductors now, we'll mix up the putty, we'll pack inside, we'll fold the conductors closed, we'll pack outside. And then when we insert this over the top, you'll find that the reduction in diameter by putting the cone over sees compression of all of the putty around the conductors. We pack a little bit in the end of the cap and force it over the bedding, ensuring that we have continuity of sealing with that putty, which is a two-pack epoxy, all the way through, therefore excluding any path from the enclosure out through the cable build. Okay, with the epoxy putty or compound, Comes with a little safety advisory. If you're particularly sensitive or have dermatitis or uh, easily prone to skin irritations, it's suggested that when handling this putty 
that you use gloves, disposable plastic gloves. It's not too messy. Take off the seal. You can see that it is two colours and what we have to do is knead this together until it becomes one, one mass of the same colour. Okay, now having completely uh, moulded and mixed the putty, we'll assemble the basic elements of our gland. Gland nut, overall diameter seal again, the sleeve, the clamping ring, and our cone. Holding all that together as best we might, splay apart the cores, and we can start applying some putty and packing it right down into the centre of those cores. Don't worry about the overburden because we can take that off later. And it needs to be packed at least as long as the ferrule. There's plenty of uh, putty in the mix. It allows for a volume of putty to exceed the requirement of the smallest cable. Smallest cable, largest volume of putty required. Pack around it as well. Slide the, the ferrule on, just making sure we work the putty into the ferrule as it moves down. You'll notice in pushing it all the way down now, we have tension or pressure between the cone and our ferrule. This should be completely filled, as should the tube. And we can see that if we push up on that, our steel wire armor once again butts up against the cone. Our clamping ring is in a good position to be able to make contact. Our sleeve will slide up well and our overall diameter uh, seal will be on the PVC, not sitting out on the, the steel wire armour. With that, we're ready to insert that through into our enclosure. And whilst keeping a pressure laterally on, laterally on the cable to ensure everything slides in, the back of the cone it butts up against the, the body of the gland. We can still see the steel wire armour. It's still butted up against that face. So whilst holding a bit of pressure on there, once again, we slide up our sleeve. and we can tighten it up with a spanner. Having fitted up our hazardous area barrier gland now, similarly with the previous gland, we insert the overall diameter seal. We can pinch just a touch of lubricant to put on that face and slide in our gland nut. Thank <laughs> you. 
there we have it once again we check and make sure we've got a suitable seal and tortuous path on the end of the cable if it's loose and sloppy here then pull it apart and have a look at the length of your steel wire armor that seal needs to be on the PVC if it's not and if you've left the steel wire armor too long then the seal won't clamp up and it will be sloppy at the cable entry last thing is to once again protect that gland at specification on site unless otherwise called for we'll just use a silicon shroud and there we have it an explosion proof or a barrier steel wire armored gland specifications and approvals are available for these products if they need to be included in a commissioning report or um, site build we'll leave that information in the escutcheon of your board you can download them from www.watmaster.com.au find your way through the products to the gland section and there is a downloads area where you can download those PDF approvals thanks for your attention